Hello, welcome to Scratch 3 Repenting. In this video, I got a new hot end for the K1 Max. It's the newer style. Let's scratch today's project. So recently, I bought the CFS kit for the K1 Max, and apparently, many of you guys say that I need a new type of hot end for the K1 Max, the unicorn style hot end. So I got this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. Not quite sure if this is the one that comes with a new K1 Max because while I was searching on Creality Store, I couldn't find any replacement for the K1 Max new hotend. So I got this from Amazon. Hopefully this is the correct one. Let's just open this and install it to the K1 Max. So it looks like we have some Allen wrench, thermal grease, and like a wrench with many different sizes. This little O-ring right here or whatever that is, the hotend itself. So let's cut this open. Oh, okay. So that's how you get open comes with a plastic bag and kaboom so apparently this is a new style for the k1 max hardened with the nozzle inside of it we will see if this will fit if not then i guess i'll have to try and get a new one first of all what we need to do is take off the cover if you're taking this off before there should be one screw behind the lidar one screw over here and then you can just pop this out. I guess if we're going to replace the hot end, I need to turn off the machine. Take out the cover. Now, what we want to do next is take off the silicone. Yep. Just keep twisting until it comes off. It should be the heater block and the temperature measurements or the thermostat, thermistor. I forgot what it's called. For some reason, I feel like the KO Max is definitely built for the CFS and mine when they were building this because it has the two connection for the CFS so I feel like it was made for the CFS but they were not ready yet when it was production time or whatever it is okay before we even take this off I'm just gonna see if this match these are both two pin but one is bigger and one is smaller so let's see if this fit if you look at it it is totally different look at that one has that and one just have this kind of shape so it's totally different connector. Well, guess I will have to buy a different one and see if I will get the same connector as these. That hot end that I bought was not the correct one. I mean, it was the correct one, but the connectors are not the same as the older version of the K1 Max. But I ordered a different one, and from the look of the picture, it seems that this one might be the correct one. Here's the one that I recently just got today, and Look at this. The connector here seems to be the ones that are for my K1 Max, the older version. This is the one that I got a couple days ago and it doesn't fit because that's the connector. That's what the connector looks like. And if we compare both of these, it is a totally different type of connection. It could be that the new version of the K1 Max has this type of connectors and the older has this type of connectors but whichever one you have i'll leave both of this link in the description and i'll label this as old version of the k max and i'll label this new connector as the new type of connector for the k max but i don't know i only got one k max let's just go ahead and install this so now what i want to do again is take off these two connectors and plug in these connection and see if it fits if this fits then i will take off my hot end and then put in the new one and yes i can confirm now that this will fit okay good so now that i know that it fits i'm gonna disassemble this right here for this there's two screw right here holding this hot end to the printhead unscrew these two screws right here okay now that we got those two out of the way it's loosened a bit and now we need to unscrew those two bolts in there that's holding in the heatsink we also need to remove this screw right here too okay so apparently we need to remove the whole motherboard out of the way i have not replaced this whole thing before we need to remove all these screw move the motherboard out of the way so now we have access to these two screw here and then we're gonna remove this okay this one is really tight in there it seems that they do some sort of Loctite, screw tight or Loctite 
and these two screw here. It's really difficult to remove them. You can see that there's like something in there, right? It could be Loctite or just some adhesive. So after those two screw, there's one screw here and I think one on the other side. So for this, we need to get rid of the LiDAR. First design here is really bad in my opinion. Messing with this, fixing this, upgrading the K1 Max is a little bit more harder than other 3D printers. I feel like I already learned so much from the K1 series because on the K2 Plus, it's quite easy to work with. You have more room. Things are a little bit more modular, not like screw tight everything and everything's like lock away. It's more accessible, but it's fine. This is what makes 3D printing fun, right? Fixing machines that is difficult to fix. Okay, let's remove this screw right here. This one is a little bit easier to remove. And to the other side. Oh my gosh, what? This thing, it's like, it's in such a weird, awkward spot. You can't even get to it. Look at that. It's in there, right? But this bracket is blocking it. Oh, you need to remove these two screws to get this out of the way. Wow, that is so much screws to unscrew. Since I'm doing so much screwing, I'm gonna be using this Craftsman Allen wrench. It's so much better. It has these ball at the end. You can screw and unscrew at a different angle, so it will be so much better. I'll leave a link down below for these two. It's gonna be so much more fun, so much easier. You can unscrew this and hopefully it will just come crashing down, right? Okay, there we go. So we just need to take away all those screws and this thing just came right off okay let's compare these two let's see if they are similar okay they seem very similar but this one is a little bit bigger than this one yeah the design yep the newer one is smaller and a little bit different not sure if it will be compatible but you can definitely see it's a lot smaller but it seems like it still has all the correct screw holes and the design is very similar but it doesn't have this anymore it doesn't need this anymore and I'm talking let's just reinstall this so to install this you just put it back here you just put this thing back here I think I need to get rid of the tube oh, I gotta remove the CFS gotta do everything oh my gosh okay I gotta remove the extruder here so I remove all the screws, extruders, and now I need to push out the tube down here. The one that I recently installed the other day. Okay. So it was this tube that I put in there. And with the unicorn style, you don't need this anymore, which is amazing. The unicorn style nozzle has come all the way up there so that we don't need any tube and it will fit directly under this right there so this hole right here I'm just gonna kind of fit it in there it's gonna fit like that and the cutter is gonna be right in there so it's gonna have enough clearance for the cutter to cut the filament without getting stuck or anything like that so it's gonna be perfect now to install this hold hot in we're gonna put it back the way we take it out so just line everything up push it all the way up then I'm gonna screw in these two screws first. Let's screw it in. Not gonna be the best angle. Now that we got that, we're gonna install these two screws on the side next. There we go. The other side. Now I'm gonna install the LiDAR bracket. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna install the fan and the motherboard back make sure all the screws are in the correct position so that it'll be way easier for us to do this line everything up and then screw it in there we go we got the motherboard and the fan back in there plug everything back in so it will be the black wire it will be on the top one here there we go and then the motor wire will be on the second one. 
Maybe I should have done this before putting it back. <laughs> there we go, got it. And then we just need to plug in the copper wire, thermostat, and the heater. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the motherboard a little bit. I'm gonna loosen the motherboard a little bit so that I have enough room to plug in all the wires. There we go. Oh, that's the, that's the hardest wire. Now, the copper wire, it's a little bit easier. There we go, oh my gosh. Now we can screw everything back in place. Put everything back in and then we will do a test. Oh yeah, while we have everything off right now, I printed this chain supporter so that my chain does not keep hitting this back part over here. I'm not quite sure how to do it. It's gonna go right back here with this cutout right here. Let's try and put this in there. There we go. Fits really nicely, wow. And, oh, there we go. So now that when the head moves back, it has this to support it. Okay, okay, that seems pretty cool. Okay, it seems that everything seems to be working. Um, no issue, but I'm gonna heat up and see if it will work. Yes, it works. Okay, that is good. So now, what I'm gonna do is gonna do this print again. No calibrations, but I'm just gonna print and see what happened. Okay, right now it's doing its first purge before printing. So let's zoom in and see if anything is gonna come out. Hopefully there's no claw or anything like that. <gasps> yeah, there we go. It's working. <laughs> now it's starting to print. Oh yeah, it's flowing. It is flowing. Hopefully the color change will work. I will update you once the color change has occurred. Really nicely without any bad calibrations. <laughs> Looks like I did a pretty good job of changing the nozzle. Okay, there we go. It's doing the color change now. Okay, it's gonna cut it. Please work. No air yet. <gasps> yes! Oh my gosh, it worked. It retracted. Let's go. You can hear that, right? It's retracting. Yes, it's working. Okay, so the fix was the new type unicorn nozzle. Yes, let's go. Oh yeah, this is good. This is really, really good. Yeah, it's working. Now it's resume printing. There we go. That was the cinnamon. I'll show you the result afterwards. All right, it has finished. Let's go, look at that. Beautifully done. Not the best print, but with some tuning, I think it will print really good. And these filaments are like old, old filaments I haven't used in, in years. Yeah, a little bit more tuning with this, it will print really nicely. I'll see if I can have something to fix this. Well, that was a successful print on the K1 Max with the CFS upgrade. It printed this Benchy, not the best Benchy boat ever, but it works. The hot end works. The unicorn style hot end makes the CFS possible for the K1 Max. So if you are using this kit for your K1 Max and you have the older version of the K1 Max like me, you need to get the new hot end with the unicorn styles so that there's no problem while cutting the filament and doing color change just like this Benchy. Not the best print and not the highest quality of filament, but it works. Multicolor printing works, color changing works. Everything with the kit works just perfectly fine. And thank you so much for all of you for telling me how to fix the KOMX problem, telling me to get the new hot end, and helping me fix the chain sagging because with that, just that small modification right there, it works pretty well. I don't hear any chains smashing into the 3D printers or in the printnet. It works quite well, but I will try to figure out more ways to improve the KOMX the CFS and the chain and all of that good stuff. So if you want to see those kind of videos, subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like that is coming all the time. Comment down below, 
Have you got yourself a CFS upgrade kit for your K1 Max or your K1 series? Let me know in the comments down below because this surely is a great upgrade for the K1 series. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and as always keep on 3D printing.